Hello, welcome to Change Lives. I'm Habiba Chevalier, producer and host, bringing to you the best of 2013. Thank you for being out there. We look forward to bringing you other great shows. We are a nonprofit organization providing state approved continuing education for administrators of Homes for the Aged, Assisted and Supportive Living Facilities in the state of Tennessee. Also Convalescent Ministry, and we're needing some volunteers. So contact me at 615-474-6516. Or visit my website, www.changelives1.org. I'll be looking to hear from you and keep watching. God bless you. Well, uh, Miss Shirley Marie Johnson, you're looking mighty pretty there today. Oh, thank you. The purple is significant because it's the national color for abuse against women and girls around the globe and um, domestic violence is just so important because we work with victims of abuse in our organization. Yes, bringing to you Change Lives today, and we are going to be talking about domestic violence and you. And uh, Shirley, you're gonna tell us about the experiences you've had with domestic violence being in your organization, yes. this is what you do. Um, what is your purpose? Yes. And how did you get started with domestic violence? Yes, our organization's mission statement is to work with victims or uh, persons that have been broken and shattered by domestic violence and human trafficking, child abuse, rape, incest uh, within our communities and other parts of the world. And I started Exodus Inc., which in Greek means a way out All right. uh, for victims is what we had in mind. And How appropriate. Yes, yes. And um, I personally experienced abuse myself in my own life uh, during my childhood years, um, learning later on that I am third generation of domestic violence. And um, something told me that there is a way out, and not just for myself, but for so many others around the world. Um, it's, a, it's a pandemic. It's really, really um, a situation that's happening to people all over the world, in every nation, and uh, every tongue, color, creed, religious um, origin, uh, it's just happening everywhere. And we have to uh, begin to talk about it in dialogue and, and see how we can make change. Make a difference. Yes. Because there are women out there that are being abused and uh, don't know what to do, don't know how to handle it, don't know where to go for help. Yes. But you're gonna tell us some of the signs and symptoms and how to recognize this domestic violence. Yes, yes. And would you maybe give us a few pointers? Sure, I, I came up with a pamphlet that I made, handmade myself through our organization for other people that may want to know signs of abuse. It's a bookmark. And um, some of the, I, the items listed are isolation, Isolation, yes. When he doesn't, or she even, doesn't want you to be around people, they have you almost locked up in a prison, if you will. Um, so, uh, let me interrupt here for a second, um, yes. Shirley Marie. So, an abuser could be a male or female. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Mm -hmm. But our organization directly works with victims of 
uh, women and children. And we have had a few men that have volunteered with our program. Uh, it can happen to anyone. So we, we want to let people know that um, the percentile is very low of men that are abused, but it does happen. It does happen to men. Yes. And some other signs are extreme control and jealousy. Uh, threatens to kill you, the kids, or pets. Calls you hurtful, ugly names. Yes, um, so stopping you once yes. again, uh, Shirley Marie, mm -hmm. uh, it's not just battering you with physical abuse, yes. but then it's also the verbal abuse verbal, yes. as well that is very damaging. Yes, and you know, sometimes I, you, I've heard this so much from uh, survivors that, you know, he punches me and he kicks me and the bruises heal. But sometimes those words, you know, there was a saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words would never harm me. Oh, yes, they do. Sometimes people never get over some of the things and they I were called. And I know a lady and, that is still, as you just said, um, still having some issues with uh, what she went through in domestic violence, with the verbal abuse. Yes. Uh, the perpetrator did not uh, physically harm her, but the verbal abuse was so tremendous. They, they sometimes say that to change a person's life, uh, you must change, they must, must change what they know. So then um, in your what would you say then, can breast cancer be prevented with all the things we've already talked about on the show today? In your opinion, can it be prevented? And Yes, it can. Okay. Uh, however, uh, it's kind of interesting mm -hmm. in that respect that there are different kinds of prevention. Um, okay. What I like to, to focus a lot of attention on because it's uh, kind of difficult challenging is, mm -hmm. is what we call primary prevention, which is the, mm -hmm. the idea of uh, taking a person who is not ill and does not have any problems mm -hmm. and giving them some kind of insurance that will help them to uh, not have any problems in the future. Taking okay. someone, this is the best example of that, is getting, getting a flu shot, getting immunized. Uh, we, we impose primary prevention on our children because we don't want them to get sick and no. you know have mm -hmm. damage to their bodies. Uh, there's also secondary prevention and this is this is uh, most seen in the form of screening. So this is where the rubber meets the road with breast cancer. Okay. Uh, you don't have to get a lot of other people involved uh, once you know what you're doing in order to to get breast cancer screening. Actually the most effective form is the part you do yourself. So knowing how to do a breast exam, uh, knowing what you're looking for uh, okay. is, is key. There's, uh, I think I could say there's, there's three keys to actually uh, the knowledge that a person needs to have in order to do their, pre their own prevention of breast cancer. And the first is, uh, is actually uh, you have to use your eyes. If, if, if something looks funny, mm -hmm. check it out. It, it's your own body. So uh, you know, if you need to just close the door and do it privately, fine. If you need to get somebody else involved, that's uh, what but the doctors are here for. But pay attention to your for. body. Uh -huh. Right, pay attention. So okay. not, not just eyeball, but, but, but really, as you say, focusing your attention. Mm -hmm. The other is you, you do need to use your hands. Uh, if you have hands, use them. Uh, this is not some kind of uh, oddity that you're, 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 you're doing something improper to actually explore your body and see uh, is, is it like it is supposed to be? Are things odd? Now, if someone maybe while they were doing the self-breast uh, examination feels something, does that mean that they should, okay, at least have it checked out? It's a good idea to have it checked out, but mm -hmm. also first, uh, I think it's very helpful to actually find some way to make a note of it. Most of us have a calendar posted around our house. Okay. There's nothing wrong with 
putting some little sign or note or something up on your calendar on this day I noticed that I had a little lump here. Uh, it didn't hurt. It wasn't big. You know, it's your calendar. Yeah, that's you what can I was write all the stuff on it that you want. If, if there is maybe a lump there, um, and maybe it does have maybe some pain associated with it, then that's maybe a definite sign to, hey, not to wait to really um, go and see a doctor. This have is, it checked out. This is one of the things that mm -hmm. doctors have uh, the most trouble with, I think, is that people, uh, you know, we're, we're tough over here. We, 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 so we, then we there like are to, some people that are in denial even after they well, maybe find mm, something and... I wouldn't call them in denial mm -hmm. um, necessarily. Uh, sometimes uh, we're hopeful is a way to, to, to put it. We, yeah, we think, okay, it's really not bothering me. It's not that bad. We don't want to be crybabies as a kind of disparaging term, you know. Mm -hmm. And so we get we get a little disoriented maybe where uh, we think that uh, I'm complaining if I, if I investigate this further. That's fine. Well, tell us more about the services that you provide. You mentioned a few, but let's go into some more of the, these services. As I look on your um, brochure, it's absolutely wonderful. And um, I'm seeing this, but okay. tell us more about that. Well, starting off, website design. And it's a lot of places that you can get what we call generic websites. But every website that we do, even if they look at your website, changelives1.org, yes. they will see that it's a custom, one-of-a-kind design. No one has a website like yours. We talk to each client and ask them about their vision, their color scheme they want to use, their um, what type of logo that they would like and we go to the drawing board and one thing about us we won't stop until you're completely satisfied so we provide professional custom website design um, redesign if someone has a website that is outdated meaning that it's over two or three years old because That's each outdated. year is like mm -hmm. ten years it's like dog years in website design so mm -hmm. we want to keep them you know in the modern looking design. So we do website design, website redesign, we do logo creation, uh, custom business cards, brochures, flyers, okay. pamphlets, design yes. and print, but also we specialize in marketing of the websites, which what is what we call search engine optimization because you can have the best website in the world, but if you can't be found, it really does you no good. So right. we have many um, ways of helping a website get to the top of the search engines, meaning Google, Yahoo, and Bing. And I notice here on your brochure, you do mass email marketing. Yes, Now, I'm going to need that service, so I'll be, I'll be getting in contact with you, Paula, because yes, I hear that you are now working in the organization next to your husband, and I think that's fantastic. Yes, ma'am. And we're, we're going to ask him to be quiet for a minute. I want you to tell us about that. <laughs> well, with me working, when I used to work in the corporate world, I was uh, into the customer service field. Okay. And I know that very well, and I saw that there was a need of customer service in the business. So I decided to work with my husband and to help him improve uh, the business. And I tell you, customer service is what keeps a business going. It does, absolutely. It's, customer service is a number one priority. Mm -hmm. And customer service brings blessings to a business. It can increase revenue. It can bring new clients mm -hmm. and referrals along with gifts and blessings from our clients, which we have received. <laughs> and not only that, it will bring customers back to you. Yes. If you, on the front, have a great personality yes, and are willing to do everything um, you can to please your customers. I mean, it's That's all right. about the, um, uh, the experiencing that integrity yes. that we're talking about. Yes. Okay. Amen. That's so important. And you're putting that out to your clients. 
Yes, and they're going to come back every yeah. time. Mm -hmm. And I know that you're also um, Better Business Bureau. You're a yeah. member of Better Business Bureau. Yes, ma'am. That we says have... a lot for your organization. Yes. Well, yes, um, we have a spotless report with the Better Business Bureau. We've been in business over eight years now. And since I came on your show the last time, I got so many calls and wow, such great praise feedback. The Lord. Uh, I mean, across the board, and people are still watching the show on YouTube right now. Whoa. And I get calls every, every, every so often. And, you know, I started it through the help of the Lord, and mm -hmm. I did as best I could, and the Lord blew me up. All right, so, praise and, God. And um, it did get to the point where the customer service began to lack, mm -hmm. and my wife saw that. La Paula. Yes, she did, and yeah. she right. came in to help me, and it's, it's a blessing because God made a wife to help her husband. To be that That's help right. Help me. That's right. <laughs> help me. <laughs> That's right. And she came in and it has actually turned things around. Mm -hmm. I mean, she got on the phone and just started calling each client one by one mm -hmm. saying, hey, I'm, 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 I'm assigned to well, you. Customers want to know that they're valued. That's right. And that's good. Mm -hmm. yes. You have to show attention because when you don't call or check and see what their needs are, if they need to make updates, then they feel like they're on the wayside. Mm -hmm. And that can separate, mm -hmm. and you could possibly lose a client. Yeah, they go to the next website they designer. Mm -hmm. But so if you know how to important. treat your customers, mm -hmm. they will come back every time mm -hmm. and also give you referrals. Yes, ma'am. Isn't that will. right, Ron? Absolutely right. Because I know you've gotten a lot of referrals from me. Yes, I yes, have, and I thank you so much for that, <laughs> yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do a lot of, like, business seminars sometime and consulting mm -hmm. and things of that nature, and we always talk about the honesty and integrity and doing what you say. And a lot of times um, businesses and or people make promises and sometimes they can't teach them, not intentionally, but life happens. But one thing we found out is just uh, if you can't do it, even if you said you could, mm -hmm. call and let the person know, right. you know? And just be honest, and yes. people really appreciate that. Right. I do. Mm -hmm. I do, being in business. Mm -hmm. yes, uh, you know, tell me what you're going to do. I can, if I, something that I can help you with or work through mm -hmm. it with you, I will do it. Hello. And welcome to Changed Lives. I'm Habiba Chevalier, your host, and we have an amazing show for you. Introducing my special guest, Deidre Butler. Say hello. Hello. I'm happy to be here at Changed Lives today and happy to share this time with you. Well, welcome, Deidre. We're happy to have you on the show. And we have with us Mr. John Turner. Welcome, John. Thank you, Mr. Valier. How are you tonight? I am blessed. I'm glad you asked. I am <laughs> blessed, highly favored, deeply loved of the Lord. We give all the glory to God. And you stay out there and watch an amazing show. We have some amazing information to share with you, um, our viewing audience. We're happy you're out there. So, Deidre, let's start with you. Uh, I am so excited about what you do with massage therapy. By the way, this is massage therapy, so you might want to take some notes. <laughs> Yeah. Well, what do you think? They might I, need some uh, yeah. notes? I think so. I, I think once everyone finds out what we have to say about the benefits of massage, they'll definitely want to learn more about it. John? I agree. All right. And what are your roles in massage therapy? Uh, Deidre, um, what, why don't you explain to us what massage therapy is? Massage therapy is the manipulation of soft tissue, like muscles and connective tissues, things that hold the body together, like bones and tendons. Um, I personally have been a massage therapist for the last 10 years here in the state of Tennessee, and um, I, I've enjoyed every moment of it. Um, okay. We have massage consists of both 
um, physiological effects and psychological effects, and we'll go into that a little bit later to, to tell you more benefits about it. And uh, we find that it's a very great healing process for anybody who enters into the, the world of massage therapy. Okay, and uh, you are program director? Right, I am currently the program director at Damar Institute. Oh, that's exciting. Uh, yeah, I actually, <laughs> that's like the best job ever because you know, you get to have massages every day oh. or almost every day. But uh, what I do there is I manage the program and I assist in the education process for teaching new students to become massage therapists and get into the massage world. We teach both um, massage theory and technique. Well, how did you get into such a wonderful career as massage therapy? Tell us about that. Well, about 10 years ago, um, I signed up and attended a class called um, Healing Touch, and I was just really interested in how that all worked. Well, oddly as it might seem, I noticed that everyone there was a massage therapist. They were actually taking a CEU class. And once I got into learning about the body and how the spirit guides us to start healing from the inside out, I was, you know, I was drawn to it. Um, I realized oh, that's exciting. I realized also that we're all massage therapists naturally. And how so? Well, like, you know, if you have a, a child and the child falls down, the first thing we do is pick the child up and rub it, rub the back, rub the little boo-boo. Or <laughs> if you walk into, if you bump into a desk or, you know, anything like that with your elbow, the first thing that we do on instinct is to rub. So that it is, goes back thousands of years. That is so true. And it's all, it's all a, a natural human instinct. Wow. So. Interesting. You know, yeah. John. Tell us, how did you get into massage therapy? Well, uh, that's very interesting. Um, <clears throat> I was, um, I had had an a, a, a injury on a job, and uh, I was in a state of convalescing. And uh, I was later on in life, in years in life, and, and uh, I'd always wanted to be a massage therapist ever since I finished high school, um, but there was no institute at that time here to teach it. So I went out to Tennessee State and I majored in health and physical education, but I always wanted to be a massage therapist. So uh, I took that opportunity during, a, during kind of a, a downtime in my life, and I went out, to, at that time it was Jones Junior College, and I enrolled and I became, uh, a year later, I became a licensed massage therapist for the state of Tennessee. Well, I know you to be a Christian man. Yes, I and, am. Um, you delight yourself in the Lord, and He gives you the desires of your heart. And so you became a massage therapist. Yes, I did. All right, that is absolutely wonderful. What are some of the types of cancer treatments that are available, say, when you get in uh, maybe stage two, stage three? Well, even irrespective of the stages, mm -hmm. the, uh, the Use of surgery mm -hmm. is very helpful uh, for a couple of reasons. One is that if you have something that is big enough to operate on, mm -hmm. uh, there's a very good possibility that uh, removing it and to, to get a better look at what it is may actually eliminate the entire problem. Okay. Uh, this, is, this is also a... Well, a Dr. Towns, our show is just um, going flying, so fast. <laughs> really, this... <laughs> You know, this is so interesting. Um, it's a big topic. Uh, yes, and we can go into a lot more, but we, we're not going to have enough time to do that today. But um, before we maybe get into maybe st stage four, which we will not be able to expound on, give us some contact information. You are Dr. Myron Towns. I am. Would you like to give us some contact yes, information? Yes, you can reach me by phone at uh, 615, that's Nashville, 562-2439, and that takes messages. I try to return them all promptly. Mm -hmm. uh, you can reach me by email at uh, T as in Towns, C as in Cares, mm -hmm. and A as in All of Us, <laughs> hyphen number two, that's just a digit, TCA2 at clearwire, C-L-E-A-R-W-I-R-E dot -E net. All right, wonderful. And uh, I'm not as diligent as I should be about my email, but I do try to respond to the phone promptly. Mm -hmm. That You know, <clears throat> believing in the victim is, is really key because 
a lot of times if they feel like they don't have a support system like their mom believing in what's going on, their sisters or the in-laws or the church members, some of the women, they are not going to even try to get out. They just feel like they're, they, are in, they are on a dead end street. So in actuality then, they feel stuck, trapped, yes. trapped mm -hmm. in, in this domestic yes. violence relationship. Mm -hmm. And I've heard so many women married would you, to... Would you say to a woman out mm -hmm. there that's, that's in an abusive relationship right now to get out, get help, what would you say to that woman out there that is being in this domestic violence relationship? Mm -hmm. I there. would say that, you know, you, you really do deserve better. Mm -hmm. um, you are, you know, highly favored of God, you're made in the beautiful image of God. God, God has so much for your life. Mm -hmm. And I know it is really hard to get out. It, it is tough to get out, it's dangerous. Uh, but I believe there is a way out. Um, in my situation, I had no clue um, how I was gonna get out of it. I prayed and I just asked God to just perform a miracle. And, and he, he did. did. Amen. One day, my abuser woke up and he just wanted to leave. Praise the Lord. And God <laughs> worked it all out. because Now I, I hear that the statistics are that before a woman will get out of a marriage abusive relationship, it's like seven or eight times they leave, go back, leave, go back before they finally well, have that's, right. enough courage and strength mm -hmm. to seek well, as I said earlier, assistance in getting out. Right. As I said earlier mm -hmm. in the show here, um, mm -hmm. a woman will leave about 17 times and go back. So before, it's 17. Mm -hmm, okay. Before she actually says enough is enough. 17. That's a high rate. That's statistically. Yes. Yes. Okay. But um, I mean, sometimes women, after one time, they say, "I'm not dealing with this," and mm -hmm. they're gone. But uh, statistically, 17 times it takes about that long. Because cause you, like I said earlier, you want the marriage to work out. Exactly. You for didn't many get reasons. into it to just give up on it. And that's just being human. Well, my problem with the abuse is, and going back to the Word of God, 1 Corinthians. 13, 13, faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Then if you love somebody, how can you, mm -hmm. you know, put, uh, put them through the kind of yes. abuse we've been talking about? Yes, yes. It, it's, it's just totally unreal to me. Yes. If you love a person, you don't, you shouldn't want to hurt them. Yes, that's true. You should not want to hurt them. Yes. Um, Shirley, do you have anything, any closing remarks that you would like to make? Mm -hmm. Because um, our time is just about up here. And thanks for watching. That's our show. Look forward to seeing you again. Bye.